President Donald Trump has mainly generated headlines as a defendant of late. Mr. Trump's faithful supporters see him in a very different light. Senior contributor Ted Koppel takes a closer look at the election and what may come after. It's mid-April in an open field at the edge of Schnecksville on the outskirts of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Nice warm beanie hat. Next move rally, sir. The winter has not entirely surrendered. The faithful have been lining up since late morning, although Mr. Trump is not expected before early evening. On a day like today, it's cold. It is. It's wet. Yep. It's nasty. Yep. What the hell brings you out here? The truth, freedom. We want our freedoms. That's what we're here for, freedom. Nope. These guys will surely reconsider their position. Now, when they hear that Biden is actually... When Biden is actually... Uh, when, they, when they're forced to reckon with Biden's proposition on how he will truly be the immigrant melter candidate... These guys will definitely reconsider their undying loyalty to Trump. I, I know it. Nobody cares about the working class. You don't care about us. You want your ratings on CBS, and you want to lift up that <laughs> idiot. Oh, yeah. It's a working class. How much you want to bet she has a fucking Etsy shop, and her husband is an HVAC business owner? Working class, my fucking dick, dude. Get out of here. In the White House. Okay. You've already made up your mind about me. And no, that's I'm not, not saying you. Okay. I'm sorry if you thought that. That's all right. I'm saying the media, you have been lying to the American people long enough. This rally took place weeks before any verdict in Trump's New York trial had been reached. But the faithful weren't going to be swayed by any verdict delivered by a New York jury. He's not guilty. If anybody's guilty, it's Biden. Sorry. There would appear to be very few, if any, people in this crowd. It was rigged. It was fake. Looking to be convinced of anything new. Do you folks think that Trump lost the last election? No. No. Not at all. And truth broken up. Yeah. It's coming out slowly. There's going to be another election. And when it's all over, if they say Trump lost. He will not lose. Well, it's I mean, in God's hand, and he's going to straighten this country out. I'm a Christian, and I just know that there's uh, a lot more to this than uh, what they're showing us out there now. I think God's behind everything we do here, and I mean that sincerely. Do you think President Trump is a man of God? Well, I would like to think he is. I feel he is. I feel he is. And every time he seems to get charged with something, more and more people come out to stand behind him. That would certainly appear to be the case on this blustery day in Pennsylvania. A solid crowd of close to 8,000. They seem to draw energy and confidence from one another. We're living in a, in a fascist state. Over these past few weeks in interviews and at other public appearances, Trump himself has raised the specter of violence should he lose this next election. The events of January 6th, the violence on the steps of Congress, the chaos in the halls of Congress, President Trump's initial reluctance to call his supporters off. All of that has congealed into an alternate reality. No longer a travesty to be condemned, it is an act of heroism to be celebrated. Please rock. It is pretty funny how the Republican narrative shifted so dramatically as time passed where we where they went from like, yeah, these guys got to get locked up. These guys are being like thugs. What's happening? These criminals to like, actually, they were patriotic Americans who need to be celebrated and immediately released from prison because they're hostages. They're political prisoners. Every part of Republican arguments devolve into the same fucking bullshit. January 6th was peaceful, but it was a riot. But if it was a riot, then it was just Antifa that caused it. And if it was our people that caused it and they're in prison, actually they were demonstrating heroism and immediately must be released. 
What is it? Which one is it? You can't... Like, why do we always allow Republicans and just reactionaries in general to, to get away with arguing on both sides of the argument every single time? You can say that about almost every, any right-wing position. Here, I'll use a random one. Okay? I'll use a random one. Totally random. I'll have you know, Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. You know what party he was from? That's right, the Republican Party. Also, we should allow the Confederate flag to be flown. Okay, which one is it? Like, what do you mean? What the fuck are you saying? I can't believe <laughs> Yeah, immigrants. Again, th thank you. Immigrants don't work. They're lazy. They rely on American welfare state. But they also steal the jobs from hardworking Americans. I for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. At some rallies, men identified as the convicted rioters singing the national anthem are invoked as victims, even heroes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen! Not I think the only positive from January 6th is that these fucking annoying HVAC business owning dipshits for the first time ever saw legitimate criminal consequences for their obvious criminal actions. And therefore the likelihood of it happening again is like fairly low because they, they no, not 10 of them, uh, approximately 1,600 of them as a matter of fact. So no, not 10 of them. And to be fair, that is the reason why I think you see a lot less support for this uh, sort of shit at, at Trump rallies. Tonight, though. Please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald. Sir, you need to start making fun of plumbers, too. Some of his HVAC guys are socialists. Yeah, not the fucking HVAC guys that are shellacking me today. Okay? Trying to fix my goddamn AC. Jay Trump. Trump seems to be missing some of his usual spark. I'm freezing my ass off up here. They can relate. Many have been out here for more than eight hours. They are nothing if not sympathetic. Two days from now. The former president is only days away from his own trial in New York. Biden trial. They're all Biden trials. You know that, right? They know that Donald Trump I have a crooked judge may be distracted. Fully gagged before a highly conflicted and corrupt judge. And it's We're only a couple of hours away from the Civil War battlefield at Gettysburg. Like the Battle of Gettysburg, what an unbelievable, I mean, it was so much and so interesting wow. and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many different ways. Other than proximity, though, the president appears unsure as to why he brought it up. Gettysburg, wow. I go to Gettysburg, wow. Pennsylvania, to look and to watch. And Gettysburg, wow. I love that. Gettysburg, wow. And, uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor. Did you ever notice that? No longer in favor. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. They were <laughs> okay. That was a banger. They're posting Trump's dubs right now. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. Is I had forgotten about this. This is an all time. This is an all timer quote from Donaldo. Such a banger. Fucking my goat, dude. Holy shit. Never fight uphill, me boys. Fighting uphill, he said. Wow. Did Lee have an Irish brogue? Almost certainly not. What happened at Gettysburg was the beginning of the- Okay, this guy is such a fucking loser. Uh, did he have a, 
Irish accent? Uh, no, certainly not. Did Lee have an Irish brogue? Shut up! Like, what are you, what are you fucking- Oh, uh, Snopes has rated this sentiment. <laughs> um, liar, liar, pants on fire rating. Most certainly not. What happened at Gettysburg was the beginning of the end for Confederate forces. Despite his crushing defeat, Lee looms majestically over the battlefield, by all appearances triumphant. It is, particularly to foreign visitors, a bizarre notion, honoring the man who led an army of rebels. It falls to Chris Gwynn, Gettysburg's chief of interpretation and education, to explain. The Confederates, they lost the battle, they lost the war, but for a long, long time, they won the war of memory. They won. I mean, they, they kind of, it's the same with the Nazis. They lost the battle, they lost the war, but fascism thrives in the Western world, in the especially. War of memory. Because what most visitors encounter is a battlefield that has achieved this kind of moral equivalency. Chris, you're putting it in the past tense as though that were no longer the case. It is still the case. It's still the case. There's a memorial down the road to the state of Mississippi. And on that monument, it talks about the righteous cause that Mississippians fought for. But what was that cause? Slavery. It's slavery. And you can go back to the Mississippi Declaration of Secession when the war begins. And Mississippians in 1860, 1861, they'll tell you exactly what the war's about to protect slavery. <laughs> Bro folded immediately. Yeah, you just got coupled. That right there, me boy is a coupling. <laughs> you just got coupled. <laughs> That's not anywhere on that monument. Indeed, even as Chris Gwynn and I reflected on the War of Memory, we learned that the names of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson are being restored to a couple of schools in Shenandoah County, Virginia. Let's uncancel Stonewall Jackson. Thank you. That reversal comes less than four years after the names were changed in response to the Black Lives Matter movement. Memory, history. Which ultimately triumphs, memory or history? Memory usually triumphs, at least in the short term. I don't think there has ever been a more recorded mini insurrection than what happened on January 6th and yet we're still arguing about what happened. Are you seeing some of the same similarities that I'm seeing in what's happening today? Uh, to a degree. I mean, you don't have to. If it's too hot a potato... Uh... It's a little hot. It's a little hot for the Park Service. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what I remember from the, the, the January 6th riot, insurrection, is I saw Confederate battle flags in the halls of Congress for the first time. They achieved something that Robert E. Lee and his Army of Northern Virginia never even got close to. They're physically in the, in the halls of Congress with the same battle flag that you know, Virginia units on this battlefield carried. And that's something I never thought I'd see. Does it bother you? Uh, deeply, profoundly. Because? We fought a four-year war that cost 700,000 lives. And to see that symbol, that flag, utilized in that way, and to see it in that, that building was something that I think if you could go and reincarnate some of these Union soldiers, these United States soldiers buried in that cemetery, they would be aghast at the sight of that. And yet, when the Civil War began with the surrender of Fort Sumter in 1861, there was throughout much of the land wild celebration and no inkling of the price to be paid. Wars rarely begin in a climate of foresight. So could the chest beating at a political rally provide real insight as to what could happen in the event of another Trump defeat? We have to get Biden the hell out of office and send him back to wherever he comes from. Condition one, be ready. Which I don't know, I think there's gonna be some real unrest in this country. I think everybody will step up now. 
In condition one, be ready. Just be ready. That's why, sir. Condition one. What's he gonna fucking be ready for, bro? Be ready for a uh, heart disease, okay? Step up now. In condition one, be ready. Like, be ready for fucking stairs. Like, what the fuck you mean, be ready? What are you gonna do? Shit yourself? Shit your diapers? Is that what you're gonna do? Just be ready. That's why, sir. <laughs> be ready for divorce. Condition one refers to a firearm with a safety on, a live round in the chamber, and the hammer cocked. Condition one. <laughs> we will never, ever, ever, ever back down. President Trump's critics and their legion are fearful of what his victory in the election might mean for the country. They might do well to consider the consequences of another Trump defeat. We will not go another four years at the pace we're going. Our side will fight back then. Tell me what that means. It means our freedom will not be stolen anymore. What if it happens again? Come on, ask a second question. Like, what do you mean, our freedoms? Like, what freedoms have been stolen from you? Like, you're 800 years old, brother. What freedoms are being stolen from you? Like what what could it what could he possibly mean when he says that? Uh be ready. Just be ready for war. Really? I think some of us are gonna go and uh, be a little nuts over it. Oh my god.